You just got to let it breathe for a minute. You can't. It's you can't, like a fine wine. It is. You, you, you can't just get it out, point it. It's like a good woman. You can't just get into bed and say, "Come on." It's got to be wine and dine first. Breathe. Whisper it, sweet nothing, for him. Sweet nothing, sweet nothing. The scope of love. There are 13 police constables in Team 3 Cambridgeshire Traffic Police. The thing about road traffic is, it is black and white. You're either doing it or you're not. I'm not one for giving words of advice. I don't see the point in stopping somebody and saying, you've driven that insurance today, don't do it again. Or you're on your mobile phone, don't do it again. And it's proven the only way to hit people is hit people in the pocket. Yeah, it's all good. There's a red mirror way, and that's going fairly well. Where are you looking? Main two? Just coming down off the hill. No, no, it's in. When I use the LTI 2020, aka Love Scope, it is a hell of a rush. It feels like holding a gun, I suppose. And everybody wants to hold a gun, don't they? It's every boy's dream to uh, be out there holding a gun. Every year, we commit over six million traffic offences. This shop at the top here, the off license. Right. Lee Fenton is on the trail of one of the more serious, driving whilst disqualified. Was in court in November 2009 and was banned for driving for three years after being caught drink driving. He's on duty with veteran traffic officer Darren Oscar. Man in a bar orders a bottle of champagne. The lady next to him. What a coincidence. I've ordered champagne too. The man says, what are you celebrating? The lady says, hubby and I have tried for years to have a baby. Today I'm pregnant. The man says, what a coincidence. I'm a farmer. For years, my hens were infertile. Today they all laid eggs. Wow, the lady says, how did that happen? The man says, I used a different cock. The lady smiled, clinked his glass and says, what a coincidence, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> They're acting on a tip-off by a member of the public that a local shopkeeper is flouting his ban. A short spell in custody usually works. So we'll have to wait and see. Right, the Renault's off the drive. It's coming our way. Hello. How are you doing? It was you who wanted to stop, buddy. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I did ask. Have you got your driving license with you? No, not with really. me. Why not? Oh, I forgot, mate. No, you haven't got your driving license with you because you're a disqualified driver, aren't you? Uh -huh. No? OK, we'll do some checks in. Come join me in the car. Just take your hands out your pockets for me, please. That's not you, my man. That's me. Yeah, you, you're a disqualified driver. Just turn around and put your uh, arms across your chest for me, please. What I will tell you is I'm resting on suspicion of driving whilst disqualified. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm defence if you don't mention one question, something which later on in court, anything you do say may be given in evidence. It's the blatant disregard. They just don't care. They've got no insurance. They're just driving around, doing what they want. Um, and they know they shouldn't be. And it gives you a glow and it gives you a real buzz when you've got that person. Your taxes here, my friend. It'd be all right, Rich. <coughs> Love the tickle, Daz. Beautiful. A nice little tickle. Yeah. Ah, just it's just a. It, it stems from I don't know from my favourite TV programme of all time, The Sweeney. I think when a job goes well, it's a nice little tickle. We didn't have to put too much into it. We found the car, sat there, and within, what, 15 minutes? 10, 15 minutes? Yeah. Pops out straight in front of us. I'm just glad I was looking. A nice little prison like that, worth 10 tickets. Not at least. Isn't it? At least. You think the guy we locked up today has been disqualified from driving? On two previous occasions, for drink drive. That is a real menace to society. And to get disqualified for three years 
and then to continue driving because it suits his purpose, to me, that's a menace. That's a, that's a menace to society. And that is somebody who is a criminal who needs taken off the roads. At the end of the day, it's his decision whether to drink and drive. It's his decision whether he's going to continue driving whilst disqualified. At the end of the day, if, unfortunately, his family have to suffer through that, no one to blame but him. Without a shadow of a doubt, he just thinks, oh, they'll never stop me, Look, I've got a fairly decent motor, and he's got away with it, got away with it, got away with it. And today, we've got our own back on him. And it's always nice. I love licking people. Lock everybody up all day every day if I could. It just went blank. Like Terry Sharp and Stuart Appleton have been driving partners for the past three years. We had words this morning about buttons and things that you do not touch. Didn't we? We did. Right, well, keep them... Well, when have I ever taken notice keep, of you? Keep those? them little porkies over there at 10 to 2, please. Make sure you look all around the vehicle when it's safe to do so. Move off, please. We're listening in break. Terry? Yes. Do you remember that time that I asked you? I do actually go, yes. Would you like to revisit that time? Shall we have a gunfight at the OK Corral? So you can squirt the first? I'm not playing that game. Being a policeman's a great job to have. Being a traffic policeman's an even better job. Um, because all traffic policemen are probably a little bit of a petrol head. So it, it's, it's what we enjoy doing, the fast cars, the motorbikes. Um, and to get paid to do that, of course, is a, it's a bonus. So why are we sat in lane two then? Because he's a Honda Jazz driver. Not that there's anything wrong with being a Honda Jazz driver, of course. It's like Citroen C6 drivers. I don't know, because I'm not Citroen C6. It's a C5, of course. But it's gold! <laughs> <laughs> it's sable gold, actually. Yeah, gold! Eh? A bit like that song, if I could remember the words, I'd sing it. Oh, don't look, man. Just pull out. With 3,000 miles of roads to patrol, the Cambridgeshire traffic officer is constantly on the move. Being proactive is a part of the job we enjoy. Like to do things, get stuck in. We're like sharks in water. We're hunting. I'm going to stop this car in front and give him a ticket because it's pink. It should be against the law. Why would you want to buy a pink car? What offence would you would you classify that? A raging public decency. The traffic police's nickname is, is Black Rat. Black rats eat their own, eat their young, which stems back from the old Metropolitan Police traffic days. Anybody, no matter who they were, would be fair game, uh, which is where they got the name Black Rat from because they used to... To, to knock their own um, officers off. Just getting an A grade coming in for the A14 westbound carriageway. Reported a red vehicle which is overturned. Um, one male has got out of the vehicle covered in blood. something as big and yellow as this with lights and sirens on. Uh, how you got your licence, I don't know. This is where we've got to fight our way through the traffic now, this building behind it. Muppets like this will get out of the way.
Can I just take some details from you? That is that all right? Yeah, of course. It's while the ambulance is taking care of that. Stuart Appleton of Cambridgeshire Traffic Police is investigating a smash on the A11. What did you see happen? Uh, he had just appeared to lose control of the vehicle. What sort of speed do you think he was doing that? Was he under the speed limit? I think so. Uh, single vehicle, I can't see any damage. On the, uh... <coughs> the damage is to that road sign, mate. Is that where he's done it? Yeah, he's, oh, hit, right, he's okay. hit the road sign, come up the embankment, overturned, gone over there. Right. And got out. <coughs> Luckily. Well, the place is a bit of a mess up here, isn't it? It's still walking, though, isn't he? Yeah, he's walking, yeah. He's very lucky, given the intrusion in the car, he's lucky to get out. He's just come back from manoeuvres. Right. And he's told one of the witnesses that he's very tired. Right. So obviously that's something I'm going to have to look at. No other explanation. He's travelling along in the first lane and he's gently veered off, so yeah. He's caused disruption. He's caused there's a doctor there, three ambulances, highways agency, uh, four police cars. So he's cost the taxpayer a few quid. Now, all because he drove when he was tired. Now, I've got to think about whether I prosecute him or you know, he's got quite a horrific injury to his face. Has that done the job? Is that, to, you know, is there a public interest in prosecuting him? I don't know. We'll have to see. What happened, mate? I, I don't really remember. I, I skidded on the ice. It was the next thing you I was going to finish a Perez um, car smoking, so I thought I could better get out of it. Do you remember what speed you're doing? Yeah, about, about 70. Like, Possibly 75. Were you accelerating or braking? Um, I think I was just going on cruising. I think my foot was on the accelerator. I think it was just... Just a cruise? Yeah. And you, you lost control, yeah? Yeah. There was some suggestion that maybe you were a little bit tired. Um, well, I've been in exercise at the weekend, but I don't think... I've had, like, the... Right. Because of ARC, so, you know. Have anybody said what you've got to your face? Uh, no. <laughs> no, you've got a bit, a bit of a big cut to your face. Yeah. <coughs> I've spoken to two witnesses. Yeah. Both of those witnesses said that you were driving within the speed limit. Yeah. Minding your own business and you went up the, yeah. the grass embankment. All right. Let me tell you now that nothing's going to happen. It's an accident. You've been injured. I can't see any public interest in prosecuting you at all. So I've got to submit this to our collision inquiry unit. Yeah, sure. But at the end, I'm going to put that it's not in the public interest to bring any prosecutions and that's going to be the end of the matter. Okay. All right, because I don't think there's no need for it. I believe discretion is paramount. We can just enforce the law and say, oh, never mind, there you go. You've done wrong, so you're going to be punished. Uh, how can you get anybody to learn from that if you just constantly punish? Why do you always have to come the long way? It's not the long way. You go that way, you're halfway there. No, because you've got to stop at all the traffic lights. And... What traffic lights? Travel at 30 miles an hour. This is a 60 miles an hour limit up there. No, it's not, it's a 30 miles. It's mile quicker. Hour. You're a cock. People have said we're like an old married couple. We bicker and we argue, we have a laugh. Have you seen the advert regarding the uh, Churchill car insurance? Have you seen Stu's face? He's got saggy cheeks like Winston the dog. And when he goes home to his mum, she says, Stu, would you like some gravy? And he goes, oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> what is the fashion boys with these goatees in? Well, you're, you're obviously not hit with the kids here. How do you do them fluffy bits in the middle then? What do you mean, how do you do it? Well, you've got like that. Like yeah, but you've got that little bit in the middle. What's that supposed like to that. Yeah, but what's that supposed to symbolise? That it doesn't bit? symbolise anything. Looks like a duck's bum. See, you've been discriminatory against me. Watch your duck. Might as well come off at um, quiet. Well, let's go and fight crime, create a safe Cambridgeshire. Come on. 
In the UK, 10 people are arrested for drink driving every hour of every day and night. Then we might have another drink driver here, mate. Uh, just monitoring our incident computer. I believe you've got a vehicle stopped, M11, junction 10. Driver was travelling the wrong way on the dual carriageway. We've stopped on the opposite side, spoke with him, realised he's uh, under the influence. My pet hate is drink drivers. I've got personal experience of being hit, and hit by one. So um, I'll go out of my way to catch a drink driver. The dirty drink drivers. I don't know why they would be called dirty. Because they knocked me off my motorbike, Terry. That's why they're that dirty. It wasn't dirty, was it? Yeah, it was. It was a dirty, underhanded trick. Well, I don't think that was the case. If I recall that day, you'd been out riding with me and it mm -hmm. had been raining. And I'll leave you on your own for five minutes and you fall off your motorbike. Drink drivers come from all walks of lives. Young people, old people, lower class people, middle class people, upper class people. There's, there's no limit. And um, sometimes it's just, I don't know, is it laziness? I don't know. Um, I don't know what it is, but uh, it's my job to catch him, and I like doing it. Lee Fenton has been called to a new incident. A car has crashed into a wall, and the driver is suspected of being over the limit. With regards to what's gone on this evening and the fact I can smell intoxicant on your breath, I require you to provide me a specimen of breath for analysis by means of this approved device. I must point out, failure or refusal is an offence which you'll be arrested for. OK. Do you agree to provide me the specimen of breath for analysis? No. OK, sir. And I'm resting your suspicion of failing to provide a specimen fine. of breath for analysis. I've never met you before in my life. What's going on? Well, you come to the police station, sir, because you failed to provide a... Uh... It's really hurting, big time. Sir. Just for a Fucking hell, fire! Sir, calm what yourself you... down. Come out, come Can out here. Can you a van to the location, please? They are not tight. My God, what are you doing to... Jesus, I was a rugby player. I've never experienced pain like this in my own life. You had your chance to ride some breath. You could have blown under the roadside and instead no, you're couldn't. messing around. I'm not messing around at well, all, thank you. You failed much. to provide, haven't you? I'm a law-abiding citizen, thank I'm you. I'm sure you probably are the man. What we're going to do, we're going to take you to the police station, OK, and we'll deal with everything, all the matters there, all right? Can you inform my mother and father immediately, well, of, of, please? Of, of course we will. What we'll do, we'll go to the police station. You don't station. seem to be doing anything about it, actually. Well, we get to the police station, you get certain rights, and part of those rights is you have someone notified you there. Put your leg in for well, me, please. Well, why, why are you touching me like that? Because you're not doing what I'm telling you to do. I just want my mum and dad to get You can certainly call them. They're actually attending a play in London right now. All right. Can I just have my mum and dad here? Sure. Would you like a solicitor? No. Oh, they might call him. Yeah. <laughs> In my experience with people who are, who are posh and pissed, for want of a better word, is you just can't reason with the people because they're always looking down at you. They don't see you've got a job to do. And this machine detects alcohol in your breath, OK? Well, I had some, some alcohol at lunchtime, so I, I, won't, I won't take a breathalyzer because it, it might still be in my breath. Well, listen to some of the questions we're going to ask you first of all, OK? Have you, since the time of the alleged offence, have you drunk any alcohol? I can't confirm or not confirm that. 11 o'clock. It's late. Have you used any mouth spray? Any what, sorry? Mouth spray. Since the time you was involved in the incident with your car. Mouth spray? Spray, yeah. Spray for your mouth. Mm. Mouth spray? Yeah, mouth spray. Have you used any mouth spray? No. Mouthwash? No. Medication? No. Eaten anything? Uh, no. I require you to provide two specimens of breath for analysis by means of the approved device. I warn you that failure to provide either of these specimens will render you liable to prosecution. Do you agree to provide two specimens of breath for analysis? Uh, no, I do not. On the grounds that it might incriminate me. I warn you again that failure to provide either of these specimens will render you liable to prosecution. And like I say, it's a chargeable offence. You'll be charged, you'll go to local magistrate's court and uh, you're going to get yourself in a spot of bother. Are there any medical reasons why you cannot or should not provide two specimens of breath? No. Okay. Absolutely not. It ticked all the right boxes, somebody who was posh, somebody who looked down at the police and to take the liberty away at the roadside and to take him to the police station. 
Straight to your cell, please. Whilst remaining professional was quite nice. Wow, this is a first. Here we go. Oh, I'm a criminal. <laughs> I'm making a suggestion here. We're going to go down Victoria Avenue, up New Market Road, to National Tires. We're going to park up there and we're going to watch a bit of traffic go by. Sounds like a plan. It's just to see if, we'll, Terry. see if we'll get anything uh, happening there, fat boy. The night shift can drag on. Black windows, do you want it? Sometimes, with few cars on the road, PCs Appleton and Sharp hunt out traffic offences. He's done a bunk on Stuart as he lost him. Oh, he has. Oh, he's chucked a right here. Uh, you see, Terry, you know, he's... Yeah, we've got a recent attempt burglary at 38 Petworth Street. Could you have to promise me? This coat looks a bit dirty, doesn't it? This window? Uh-huh. And that window? Yeah are illegal. Now then, I can never give you a fixed penalty notice of a fine, or I can give you a form. Basically what that means is you have got two weeks, 14 days, to take this take this off. I'd PG9, dude. That immediately prohibits the vehicle from moving. Why would you have done that? And it's got to get a full MOT before it's allowed back on the road. Why would I have done that? Yeah. Because it's dangerous. Terry is too nice for that. Take your car to an MOT garage. If you do that, that's the end of the matter. If you don't do it, you go to court. If I send it in 14 days... That's yeah, it's fine, providing I get that back within 14 or three weeks. If I go back within three weeks, yeah, it's fine. fine. I don't want to stop nothing else. It's free. Oh, yeah, Stu thinks he, you, you, you let him off lightly. The gentleman was very nice, he was very polite. Why do I need to pro prohibit his car? Just because I'm going to be an arsehole and he's a foreigner? No, I'm not going to do that. Stuart's a foreigner, he comes from Manchester. You're just persecuting somebody because they're foreign. I'm, I'm not, not doing persecuting them. Yes, you are. You would do it to an English person. I would. Why? Because I, I don't think that's acceptable to have that level of tints around driving around at night. <laughs> it's funny, national ties. So we're choosing to do what you want to do and fuck everybody else as per normal, then, is it? Shut up, Terry. Right, okay, fair enough. It's a bit like that again, is it? Yes, Uncle Terry. Yeah. What would you have there, Terry? Oh, any car, you can have the Bugatti Vaver yeah, on it. It's not practical, is it? He just said you, you can have any car. Yeah. I'd have more than one, that's the trouble. I'd have a Lamborghini, I'd have a Ferrari, I'd have an Aston. You see, I wouldn't, I don't like, they're not practical. I don't like something practical that goes like shit on the no, Just so you can have cow cushions on the back seat, yeah. you sad basket. I would. You are on the planet with the pixies, aren't you? Oh, come on, buddies, you must be somewhere. We've got reports of a two vehicle head on road traffic collision at, uh, on the A141 between Chatteris and Warboys. Um, all we know at the moment is fire are en route to it, ambulance are en route, um, and we've got two persons, the drivers, trapped in each car. The A141 is pretty much what you see here. Uh, we're, we're on it now. Quite a fast free flowing road, 60 miles an hour limit, so you've got the potential there. A head on collision, both vehicles travelling at 60 miles an hour, that's a 120 mile an hour impact, so it could be, uh, 
could be quite a serious accident. There you go, you can see the blue lights up, up ahead, look, so we're, we're just coming across it now. What's the score on? It's, it's obviously an overtake that's gone yeah. severely wrong. Um, the lady in the vehicle here is most uh, seriously in, in the Astra. In the Astra. Right. Yeah. Um, they're, they're looking to uh, obviously take the roofs off and both both chaps. Isolated uh, femur injury. Right. She's uh, bleeding right. internally as well. Right. So it's potentially potentially life threatening. Yeah. Right. Okay. No problem. Thank you very much. No Good. Yeah, I've just spoken to the um, one of the paramedics treating one of the ladies. She's got um, bleeding internally, uh, her pulse rate's going up and down, potentially life-threatening injuries. Um, it's a head-on collision. I haven't got an update yet, sir, uh, regarding the, 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 le the other person that's involved. So, uh, as it stands at the moment, it's potentially life-threatening. I'll update the control room. What's the status of this chap here? The moment he's stable, but he's, yes, he has queries quite serious internal injuries and pelvic right. injuries as well. Right. But we're pretty sure he's going to be going off in the helicopter down to Adam Brooks. Right. This guy, um, that, that one in that will probably be going over to Hinchin, but by land ambulance. Right, okay. okay. So this one's the most serious one out of two of them, yeah? Yeah, the yeah, two, yeah. A crash impacts the lives of not just those in the car. Thank you, it's PC Neil Jackson from St. Ears Traffic Police. And it's down to the traffic officers to bear the bad news to any next of kin. Stephen, your son, has been involved in an accident. He is quite poorly, I have to advise you of that. It's the worst part of the job. You never know how um, a family member is going to react with that sort of news. Of course, that's the bit I don't like doing, and I make no bones about that. I have trouble doing that um, because I don't like the, the emotions that are involved in that. Um, but that's the that's the, the worst bit about the job for me. Um, so that's the bit I think about quite a lot. Imagine lying there like that. You just one minute you're driving along, the next minute you're lying there with all those people around you. It's awful. I've got next to kin on board with me, uh, I'm Rick Ladenbrook, so. This is the update I had while I was on my way to see you. They're stabilising her, she's just going through for uh, an X-ray and scans to find out exactly what, what's broken and where it's broken, that kind of stuff. Wayne Softly is driving to the hospital. On board is the boyfriend of the woman caught in the collision. You've been together long? Yeah, a few years ago. <laughs> yeah? yeah. Yeah, no, I did feel the worst. Oh, Jeanette, Nick. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I've got some. Uh, well, I ain't got this, some. I ain't got, I've got some bad news. Um, I'm now in. Uh, I'm now going to Addenbrookes. Um, Catherine has been involved in a in a road accident. Yeah. Um, she's got some. She's got some. Um, well, major, but she's stabled at the moment. Um, so I'm in a. They're now taking me up there. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Yeah. Oh, 
Did he tell you about his car? No, I heard. Have you done something wrong with your car? Have you had a bit of a dink? It's oh, to you. That's going to cost a fortune, being an expensive old car like that. Well, um, well, do you know what the funny thing was yesterday? He was trying to arrange um, for it to Let's be fixed. The first, sure. No, 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 <laughs> bollocks the accident. That's not the interesting bit, is it? The interesting bit is that, um, do you know what they give him? Ford Focus. No. Ford KA. Oh, a a smart bit. car. The way we deal with the tragedy, as they say, it's gallows humour. We have a laugh, we have a joke. If you don't, you're probably going to go and wibble. That's what we call it, going wibble. But Terry, um, we decided not to do that, and he's now got a hairdresser's car instead. So you've got to be him... careful about talking about a hairdresser's car, because he was driving one. Oh, They've yeah, given that him... was my aunt's car, in fairness. They've given him a CLK 280. Old... Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. A V-Reg. V-Reg, that's the old one, then. Yeah. Well, it is a real hairdresser. I think I'd rather have the smart car, wouldn't you? Yeah, so, yeah I would. Yeah. No. Yeah. no. Especially when, when you grow your hair, it looks like pubic hair. <laughs> look at the top of your bar on it, then. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad thing, you know, we're not laughing and we're not joking about the scene and the people, we're just laughing and joking in general, just to lighten ourselves up a bit so we can get on with it again. I'm Neil Jackson, I'm one of the traffic policemen from okay. Cambridgeshire, I'm yeah. based down at St Nick's Police Station. Yeah. I've been out to the scene and seen what's gone on. Yeah. Firstly, I don't know whether you've been told, but um, I made a quick phone call to your mum, right. um, yeah. so they're going to start making their way over here. There's just a couple of bits and pieces we need to go through, mm -hmm. all right? If you start feeling poorly or anything like that, or you don't want to continue, just okay. say so, all right? Firstly, have you had any alcohol? No. When was the last time you had a drink? Uh, Sunday evening. Sunday evening? Yeah. Can you be right to give him a quick breath test? Um, Curtis, are you okay with the is he going to be comfortable? How, yeah, I was going to say, how much can he blow? I mean, it's fairly easy, it's up to you. Will you think you'll be able to blow into their stuff oh, while you wait on... Do you want to give it a go? Yeah. Let's give it a quick go. They're fairly easy. Take a pretty deep breath. Blow. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep... Wonderful. Thank you very much. <clears throat> that's fine. Just as I suspected. So that's OK. It's just obviously something that we've got to cover sure. because it's quite a nasty collision. We just want... Mm. Do you want anybody coming back later on saying you were drunk? Mm. You come standing here with me, fella. Regards broken bone, she's got a broken thigh bone on the right. She's got a small break to a pelvis, again on the right side. Mm. OK, the, the thigh bone will need fixing, fixing. in theatre. Yeah. Um, she may well, she's probably got a fracture of the tibia fibula, the lower leg on the left. Um, she's got a chest drain in on the right side. Right. OK, that's a little tube which goes in through yeah. here, in between the ribs. And yeah. that's to drain off. She has a small collapse, a slight collapse lung on the right side. Right. Where air gets between the chest wall and the lung. The two drivers in this crash have escaped with their lives. But not everyone is so lucky. Four weeks earlier, Team 3 had to deal with a fatal collision. The driver of the blue car was 60-year-old grandmother Glynis Rose. She died when her car was shunted into oncoming traffic. It's my job to go knock on the door and tell Gordon that his wife had died. And I hate doing that. Saying the words that I've just been to a, an accident. And uh, it's my duty to tell you that your wife's died in that accident. And, you know, you can't beat around the bush. You've got to tell them, in no uncertain terms, that your wife has died. And the reaction you get after that is... That's the, uh, the thing you think about. As part of the investigation, Stuart Appleton must pay another visit to the bereaved husband, Gordon. He's building the case against the driver the police blame for Glynis's death. How are the extended families today, all right? To be honest, 
We're all resigned to the fact that it's a joke. What is? Well, I mean, he's going to get away with it, really. You say that. We had, uh, we've got the, the, the last job we've got to go to court um, was a death, or well, it's just been, we've had the advice back into death by a dangerous driving and we weren't expecting that. So don't resign yourself. Yeah, but he, he, he gets sent away and he do about 18 months, two years if he's lucky yeah. and I'm paying his board and lodgings. You're right. I mean, no offence, but it is a, It you is. Know, you're at the mercy of the courts and, and... I'm sorry, in my eyes, he murdered my wife and that was... Of course he did. As simple as that. He might as well have put a gun at her head. Um, road traffic accidents happen. Yeah. But... For a reason. For a reason. And that, to me, that stretch of road is a clear road and there's no way that he could not see in front of him. The coroner might make recommendations about the road. I might help people in the future, but it don't help me now, but it don't bring my girl back. This accident has devastated Gordon's life and the grandkids and everybody else in the family. As Gordon said, he's killed my wife. You know, the, the chap's probably looking at a prison sentence, but it's not going to be a lengthy prison sentence. And is that going to be justice for the family? No, I don't think so. If I could change anything, I would change the sentencing for death by dangerous and death by due care, because I don't think it's enough. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of stuff there, the whole road's blocked. There's, babies, there's, there's a baby, there's injuries, it's a lot. What kind of injuries are we talking about? There's people lying on the floor, the car, the van is completely smashed up, there's a baby. Um, there's people standing up as well, there's another van overturned. Right, so how are we doing about ten injuries, yeah? One, two, three, four, five, seven. OK, and um, we should be there. It sounds a long time, we should be with you for ten to fifteen minutes, all right? OK, thank you. Um, A family of seven in a people carrier with a caravan in tow has broken down. A white van has driven straight into them, killing one passenger instantly. Another is fatally injured. He's explained to me that he had a near side blowout, bang, tyre, bang, and he says he's actually stopped off the live lane. Right. And that's as far as I can really get out of him. OK. Because it's, it's his mother that's died and he's got his baby with him at the moment and his wife's quite badly hurt as well, I think. Main offender, transit man. Yeah. You know, she's he's probably come it. over a bit of a brow of the hill. You turn up, take your helmet off, put your hat on, you go and speak to the sergeant, what do you need doing, Sarge? You know, somebody's got to be there to deal with it, and that's us. You know, we go and clear up the mess. We go and take the bodies to the mortuary. It's what we do. It is our world. It's what we do. I'd like to say I was pretty hardened to the, to the, the, the seeing, the injuries, the bodies. It doesn't bother me. It's the emotions that, that, that 
get to people, I think, rather than the actual, you know, you, you, perhaps when you first see it, then it's a little bit hard to deal with, but you see it time and time and time again, then it's just another accident. But it's the emotions of the people involved that get to you. It's all very well saying you can detach yourself from it, but there's always the time when you get home and it's a late night, so nobody else is up at home and maybe you haven't really had a chance to discuss things with your work colleagues and you just sit there watching TV but not watching TV because your mind's just running at 100 miles an hour and that can get to you. Um, and it's got to me, I don't mind admitting it. Um, and I had to take some time out for a while. I do try and, and do my best I can for these people. I mean, there was a triple fade till a year and a half ago now, and me and my colleague went to the mortuary and we washed down the young children, uh, covered them up and did the best we could for them, really. Very sad, you looking at two young people lying on the mortuary slab who are 10 and 6 years old, not even begun life, don't even know what life's about, and have had their life taken away from them and you're preparing them for the parents to go and see the children uh, and to formally identify them. And a lot of people say, yeah, it's just a job. It, it is a job and I accept that, but at the end of the day, we are human beings. Everything that we do is trying to prevent that big accident that's gonna cost somebody's life or is gonna change somebody's life. Public might think that speeding Driving on your mobile phone, not paying attention while you're driving is a minor thing, but it's what kills people. At court, the disqualified driver was banned for a further three years. The driver received a 17-month driving ban for refusing a breath test. It was his first offence. In a statement, he told us that he regrets the incident, deplores drink driving, and that he thinks the police do a fantastic job. The two people injured in the head-on collision were found to be innocent victims. A third person who was responsible for the crash pleaded guilty to reckless driving. She received five penalty points and a fine of £180. The man who caused the death of Glynis Rose was convicted of death by careless driving. He received 300 hours community service and a driving ban of 18 months. It's going to be one of them nights. It's going to be one of them nights. Oh, hello, what have we got over here? That's a car at the side of the road. Yes, I'm more looking at the taxi on zigzags. No, yeah, oh, yes, he was. Bloody young, inexperienced traffic officer you are. Me, 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 me. Three points, £60 fine. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, yes, he was. Is there an emergency going on right now? Emergency response. The police who answer our cries for help when we dial 999. Open the door! Get in the car. Get off me! You shouldn't be ringing 999 unless you've got an emergency. He didn't want to play the Wii. You, you wanted to play the Wii. Is that, is, that about, is that right or wrong? You turn around to your colleague and you say, you won't actually believe what I've just heard. The cops are back next Monday from 9 o'clock. Now, keep an eye on what people have been tweeting about tonight's programme with the hash coppers tag. If you're not on Twitter, visit channel...